that's what we're after. This will be strong cordage for your uh, fishing line. That's a bite. See, I'm getting a bite. I got him. Slip in. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's a keeper. Hi, I'm Greg Ovens, and this is Ovens Rocky Mountain Bushcraft. Prickly. I'm going to collect some of this uh, wild rose and you'll see why. And then we're going to get some dog bane, start working on our new project right on. This is a spot that I collect it quite a bit. I like this big tall dog bane. Great for making line and cordage. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to make uh, homemade fishing hooks and homemade fishing line. The fishing line, excuse me, will be from dog bane. So to get the fibers apart, we're going to bend it all the way. It'll break in spots. You see the fibers at the end here. That's what we're after. We're going to make some cordage. Wow, fishing line. Where are you going with that bark, Finn? Tore a piece of uh, cedar off this tree, I guess, and off he goes playing. <laughs> That's fine. We're going to split it with our fingernail all the way. We want two pieces out of one stalk. Okay, okay we got two pieces. This is a good time of year to collect the dog bean. Uh, for two reasons. First of all, the bark will come off easier. So now we're going to break it. And you see the wood parts? You just want to get rid of them first. This is where our fibers are going to be. See? There's our fibers separating. Longer pieces, the better. So now we're going to take, we're just going to about half inch sections, wiggle it. Try to break that bark up, twist it, whatever you got to do, and see how the bark is kind of coming off now. You can pick some of the ones off. Once we get the bark off, that's the fibers we're after for our fishing line. So now I got a fairly long piece, almost two feet long or about two feet long. It's all frizzy as you can see at the ends. We're going to start not quite in the middle because I want to stagger uh, where I splice in so that uh, as I'm adding pieces they're not in the exact same spot. So basically we're going to twist it in the middle really tight between your two fingers and hold it. And then eventually you see how we're going to get this, a knot wants to form, or like an eye. Then we're going to hold the eye. And now we work the other way. Basically, we're going to twist towards the camera, the one, and then fold it back over the other one. Twist the one back towards yourself. I'm twisting towards the camera, the other one, and back towards myself. Can you see? See, you can't. Now, I don't care if uh, the beginning of my line is fairly thick, but I'm going to make it more narrow. Where the hook's going to be will go with narrower line. Very tedious. And then you want these strands. So it does take time, but that's what you're after. I've got a piece here that's uh, all scraggly, you see. The fibers are separating, but it's all cleaned. So before I would work with a piece like this, I'm gonna put it on my knee. Sometimes you have to damp your hand a bit and roll it first before I start using it. 
get the fibers back together. So basically before we start, we're going to have something like this then. And see we've cleaned up a lot of those fibers now. There's little pieces of bark here and there too, but don't fret about that either. They'll wear themselves off. Twist till we get our knot. Twist towards you. And you know you're doing it right if you let go and your ravel doesn't come undone. And see, I'm happy with that. This will be strong cordage for your uh, fishing line. It's amazing how strong dog bean is. So it's gonna take a while to uh, make all this cordage for the fishing line. So I got a fire going. I'm gonna cook up a steak for myself. One for my buddy Finn. How oh, the steak's doing, Finn? Want a piece? Come. Come over here. Gentle. 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 Oh, good boy. You betcha. You're such a good boy. Gentle. Sit. No, you have to sit, man. Good boy. When you're collecting dog bean in the spring like I am, you want to look for a reddish brown color. I, I brought one just to show you that is whitish. You'll see how white that is? And what that means is the fibers are going to be rotten. They're not going to work. Like, look. You can just break it. It's uh, There's no strength to it. Yeah, there's some fibers in there still, but there's just no strength. Like, realistically, the white ones, avoid them. Even if you think you have the right ones, which uh, sometimes can still rot. They can have a weak spot in them. So once I get a couple of feet, I'll pull on the end of it to make sure that it's going to be strong enough. And I know that this one is strong, so pull on it before you add it to your cordage. Just a little tip, I guess. Remember how we twisted it and got the eye to start and then went backwards and down? Put it on something so you can keep tension on it. I'm going to use the aerial on my truck, and then I can keep tension on it when I'm working. Okay, so I've got my shorter end that I want to splice into here, a bit longer end here. I want to add this piece. I'm going to add this one beside the short one. Okay. I'm going to get over this way. Like that. So I've got some length on the short one. This one is going to overlap in between. I'm going to roll them together. Mosquitoes are out now. My favorite insect. Same procedure again. Twist. Wrap. twist, wrap. So now I've gone a couple inches from where I spliced. You can see the little end sticking out. I just cut that piece off. This is going to be very strong fishing line. And we're going to catch fish with it too. So folks, I've uh, got enough length on my line. Basically, I wanted about 15 feet. I measured my cordage out and I have 20 feet. 
Now also what I'm going to do, you might be thinking to yourself that's pretty thick line. But I mean that, that thickness of line will hold a big bully, a big ling cod. You, you can't even break this by hand. I'm going to use a traditional hook for the first fish so we can say okay, the dog bane line worked. And I'm going to make a leader line about three feet that's going to be a lot thinner than this. And then what I want to do is I want to make three different types of homemade hooks. One out of wood. I want to see if I can find a, a small dead bird like a robin or a grouse and use a couple of the bones to make a hook. And then also I have, as you, you saw, some rose, wild rose, and I want to see if I can make a hook that'll work with the wild rose as well. And then once we've caught a couple of smaller fish, I want to see how big a fish we can catch as well. It's going to be exciting. A lot of work and time went into making this line. I don't know how much time. Basically get carpo tunnel just making the line. But in a survival situation, that's what we want to do in this video, is catch fish with homemade line and homemade hooks. So now I've got a uh, really fine piece. By the time I twist this, I mean it'll be very, very thin. Let's see if I can get it through the hook. It went. Okay. So now just like how I made the cordage, I'm going to twist till I've got a loop and then start coming back around the hook. And at least the leader line is going to break and I don't have to keep replacing the main line, which is strong. And then the same way with, that we uh, made the other cordage. Twist, wrap. Even this will be pretty strong. Dogbane is, is just such good cordage material. Now we've got a thin line. And tomorrow morning I want to try catching one here. This is actually is uh, the first lake that Zach and I went to on the 30 day challenge. So the fish are going to be tiny, but I want to say, hey, we caught one with our homemade line. And then we want to catch one with a homemade hook, a bigger one. I like big fish. I've gone about four inches and I just want to, hopefully you can see, the leader line that I'm making is actually thinner than the hook itself. So this is going to work just fine. Wait and see. I get a lot of uh, questions in the comments about hunting knives and what I recommend. So I thought I'd take a couple of minutes and talk about that. Uh, you want a good knife when you're in the bush. You want one that stays sharp, um, holds an edge. That's what you want. Uh, you remember uh, Karchi Karpati sent me a uh, joker knife and I love that knife. You've seen me using it in most of the videos. And this is a Joker Nordico. And this is a K720 carbon steel. And you can get this thing very, very sharp. And it holds an edge. I mean, you can't go wrong with these Joker knives. And they're reasonably priced. But they noticed, uh, the Joker company noticed that I was using their knives. So they sent me some to try out. The other one that is uh, K720 as well is this uh, Campero. I like the handle on it. So that's the same steel as my Nordico. They're just razor sharp. I mean, you could shave with these things. And like I say, I just love the way they hold an edge. They sent me also an Ember. I like the handle on this one as well. All three of these are very similar shape. All good steel. And then we've got, what's this one called? The Nomad. Little bigger blade. But that looks good too. All the steel from these knives I find is really excellent. Sharp as can be. My recommendation is Joker knives. Made in Spain. This one's got a bone handle. Now that's a knife. That's a knife. I'll try this out too. I don't know what type of steel this is. But anyways, so I've got some trial knives from Joker. Thanks Joker. If you want a good hunting knife, look them up on Amazon.
that it's really worth it. I love their knives. I decided to come back to the lake that I had success with the uh, guillotine fish o matic because there's bigger fish, and if we want to test our dog bane line, why not try for a little bigger fish? I've got my leader line tied to my main line. This is really thin. I didn't quite get three feet, a little over two maybe. And uh, I'm just going to tie a little chunk of stump, and hopefully it has enough weight to get out 10, 12 feet hopefully. And then if we have success, we'll get on with some uh, homemade fish hooks. That'll be really exciting, I think. So it uh, went a little further than I thought, and now my whole line is on the lake. Maybe I can get the dog to go retrieve the bobber. I think I can reach it. Thank goodness. Almost lost our line fin. Is that your stick? Is that your stick? Get the stick. Well, we don't want that to happen again. Just about lost our whole line after all those hours of work. You're not jumping again, though. I might want to use not a bobber, but a stick because the line sinks. Tomorrow might have to just use a, a pole and maybe a small weight or something. Problem with the line is when it gets wet, it gets heavy and you can't cast it uh, unless you have some kind of weight. So I almost need the bobber, but this time I tied it to the dock. So my line shouldn't take off. Good thing the line was floating for a few minutes so I could get it though. But that scenery was beautiful, eh? The sunset, reflection on the lake. I mean, that's worth getting out here just for that. I actually came back to the first lake. One of the reasons is that um, we have a boat here. So I can get out and just drop my line down and uh, not worry about trying to cast it out and this and that. This line be great for rivers and creeks. A little difficult in lakes because when it gets wet, it sinks and then you need a weight. And as you saw, I uh, threw the whole setup into the lake. But anyway, this boat leaks a lot. But I brought a candle and I'm going to see if I can repair. There's two or three big holes in the boat. And I think I can just drip wax in there and maybe prevent it from leaking. We'll get out there and uh, see if we can catch our first fish with the dog being fishing line. Like I say, I got my candle and a lighter. Remember, don't leave home without a lighter. And actually, a candle is a good thing to have in the vehicle as well. We got three here, pretty big ones. I haven't checked the other side. Ooh, that's a big chunk of the boat came off. Looks like Gilligan has been trying to fix it, maybe. Gilligan. The boat has seen better days. The hole up at the front is about two inches long and an inch wide. <laughs> Start with these ones. I don't know if this hole's fixable. But I'll see if I can cut a piece of my candle to wedge in there and put wax around it, but I'd hate to get out in the middle and it breaks and got to scramble to shore, but it's not a big lake. Lost that piece. I need bigger chunks. Then the candle will be wrecked. Not that I care about the candle. Got to fit it together like a puzzle here. Okay, that's pretty solid. Smaller chunks. You just got to try different things sometimes. Well, I can just do this too. Well, it seems to be sticking. Well, Greg's candle repaired boat. See if she floats. 
So I'm just gonna get the boat in the lake. Oh man, that's heavy. Oh, you're kidding me. They must have made this boat in the 1955s. Thing weighs a ton. Holy crap! Oh my goodness. Now we got some from the lip, but whatever. As long as it doesn't get worse. I've never seen the likes of that. That boat probably weighs as much as my truck. Seems like it. So I haven't seen any sign of any major amount of water in the boat. Looks like my repair worked. We're not getting flooded out anyway. Might be leaking a little bit, but not bad. Oars would be better. One paddle idea, not the greatest. But whoever made the paddle came up with a pretty good plan. Pretty nice paddle. We don't have to go fast anyway. It's been a while since I can say I haven't caught a fish all day. It's been a while since I had to fix a boat instead. It's been a while. That's all I can say. Give her a go. I'm just gonna use it as a hand line. The line sinks, which is kind of good. It would be nice to get lucky right away. Not sure how deep it is here. I think I have to go super deep. We got about six feet of line out. Probably enough. One thing I notice about this dog bane line is it doesn't tangle. It's pretty good for that. Oh, thought I had a bite. Oh, I am getting a bite. Feels small though. That's a bite. Starting to drift, I gotta. Fish are rising around us here. But that's for bugs on the water, so they might not be interested. We gotta keep trying, because we're gonna get them. Yeah, I like that line, the way it kind of sinks and, and it doesn't tangle. Even when you think it's tangled, like that, it just comes apart. I love that line. Okay, so no bites this evening. Uh, we'll try again in the morning. I'm gonna keep trying. It's just like my fishomatic. I kept trying and trying till it worked. That's what I like to do. The angel opens her eyes. Pale blue colored eyes. Remind me of the glory of the sun Oh, I feel it coming back again Like a roaring thunder chasing the wind I can feel it I came back to the other spot. Like I say, I need to tie a little rock on for a weight, go to the bottom, and just let it sit. Of course, the wind is starting to come up, we 
which uh, makes things a little more awkward for everything. I find this line is ties quite nice. Okay, so I got my weight, at least two feet of leader line. And I've got my long, seven foot at least, closer to eight, huck fin pole. I know this line will work, it's just uh, now it's a situation where when are the fish going to bite? Hopefully they bite before the mosquitoes. But yeah, like I say with this line, it's, you know, you think you got this massive tangle and you just pull and it just seems to unwind itself and nothing major. You just pull it a couple times and it just untangles itself. It's just great. See, it's easier to sit at home, have pizza and watch the video and wait for me to get a bite than it is for me to wait and wait until I get a bite. <laughs> We're getting bites. See, we don't have to go out that far. Hey, they took my bait, but I mean, I was only out like 10 feet from the dock and uh, bites right away. I can see they're not huge, but we just got to catch one. You know, maybe we'll catch a bigger one, but first we got to catch one with our line. I'm getting bites. There's a couple of nice ones too. But they're basically just chewing my bait up. I got one. Alright. Our dog bait line, man. Not huge. I'm gonna try to let him go. We'll try for another one. He looks okay, but I mean, yeah, he's only about eight. Eight, oh, there he goes. Okay, time to go. We got one. I'm gonna go for another one. This time we want a little bit bigger, maybe something we can actually keep and eat, you know. I knew this line would work. I knew it. Now we just got to make homemade hooks. Oh, getting a bigger bite, I think. Seems like hand line and it works too. Now we're getting lots of action. We're not going to get one like that. We had a bunch of seaweed on it. I am getting a bite. I'm getting a bite. Oh, did I get him? Hmm. Okay, well. Yeah, see I'm getting a bite. Well, I like... I got him. I think I got him. Oh, don't go under the dock. Come on, don't keep going under the dock. Oh yeah, he's decent. Don't slip in. Oh yeah. There we go. Oh yeah, that's a keeper. <laughs> we got a keeper this time. Oh, the dog bane line comes through. All right. 
Well, that's good enough. I got my pan fry. We were getting lots of bites, but we got a keeper on our dog bean line, man. Success. These are really good knives. Those Joker. I like this uh, Campero too. So, I'm going to eat this fish. I know Finn, he likes his fish too. Hey Finn? Want a piece? Come. Gentle. I think it might be hot. You want that? Get it. You're not even in the camera, Finn. Gentle. Good boy. No, you can't eat the whole thing. I gotta have some to stay out of it. Hmm. Boy, rainbow's good. So that's it for part one of our dog bane fishing line, bushcraft survival hooks. Make sure you hit the bell for notifications because probably tomorrow I'm going to get on part two of this video. We're going to try several different homemade hooks with our dog bane line and hopefully have success with that as well. So, thanks for watching and we'll see you on that next one right away. This summer I'm going to try to keep the videos coming so we'll put the bell on and watch and wait for part two of this video.